welcome this is Barbara from Vienna Austria and as you probably have seen from the title today we are making five envelopes following one of Maud's beautiful prompts I do have Maud's prompt list linked below in case you haven't downloaded it yet and I'm also going to link the video below where I made this folder for the prompts in case you still need some inspiration of how to keep your prompts in your journal and also I'm going to link Maud's video where she explains how to use the prompts or what else you can do with them so no excuses <laughs> I'm using prompt number 22 which is make five decorated envelopes with five special friends in mind I'm cheating a little bit because I'm actually going to keep one for myself to use in my journal today so I am going to make five different envelopes five different sizes all using the same coin envelope technique that I love and what I'm showing you here is my recent find in a in an, in an antique bookstore that I have recently stumbled upon and love very much and this is a book about Austria or Hungarian Austrian Empire that we used to have and these pages are great because they are small and they are lightweight meaning they are very easy to fold without having to worry about the page breaking so I'm gonna as I said I'm gonna use the same method for all of these envelopes they are just gonna be different sizes and I'm going to decorate them each in a different style so as you can see here the folding was very easy and now I'm just cutting away the excess flaps on the top part I always cut a little slanted because first of all I think it looks nice and second of all it makes the flap easier to close on the top now I'm just using my glue stick to glue down the middle and then the bottom flap and then we have our little pocket or coin envelope I just love these if you know my channel then you know how much I love these <laughs> next I'm using another recent find from the same um, bookstore uh, it's it's called the world of birds and it has beautiful beautiful illustrations of birds in all kinds of sizes and I picked this one which I thought would be small enough to work as a focal point for this little coin envelope so I'm just using my ruler to tear that out and instead of using my vintage photo today I'm going to use my, my memento <laughs> espresso truffle ink to make a border around it it just gives it a little different look than if you use the distress tool just, just to try something a little bit different and I did want to have some more papers underneath so I took out my scrap drawer and I'm going to choose four papers to kind of frame this image so obviously you're not going to have the same book um, but what I wanted to show you here is you can use anything you have and with the five styles that you'll be seeing in this video I hope you will find or I hope you will have inspiration to find something in your stash you don't have to buy new things um, to to make some of these collages or decorations maybe you have digital printouts maybe you have postage stamps maybe you have other ephemera that you got somewhere you have books where you can cut something out or a magazine like the possibilities are really endless and they are so quick to do so that was number one for my second one I wanted to use some of this paper now I want to say it's Japanese but to be honest I'm not sure <laughs> could it be um, Chinese I don't think it's Korean so sorry for my ignorance I do love the the type which is why I wanted to use it so I'm making a little bigger envelope I'm using the same technique the only thing I'm doing differently is I believe yeah, so I'm cutting the top flap, the I'm cutting straight edges for the top flap. Otherwise, I'm doing everything the same because I wanted to use my four millimeter corner rounder just to give it a little bit of a different look. So just for those two corners on the flap, 
think that looks cute. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to glue it down the same way. So I glue the middle and then the bottom flap up. And there's our little pocket. And I'm going to use one of these, which seems to be a, a zine, looks like. And I wanted to use one of these um, as my focal point. And I'm going to use the one that has this lady where she's giving a present. That one on the left. I think that's very cute and very appropriate because we, we said we'd want to give these as gifts to special friends. They are also great in happy mails or just to use in your journal or to just give, yeah, to give someone a gift that's small enough to fit in this envelope. So now I'm going to use my, my use some more papers of the my my um, bento stationery box. Um, I will link the unboxing of that below with all the information where you can get one of these. Currently, I believe um, they're out of stock, but hopefully there will be more later on. So again, I'm just trying to make some sort of a background with these Asian style beautiful hand printed papers. So once everything is glued down, that is what that looks like. But I did want to add something else. I wanted to add a word to it. So I have these cutouts that I've had like forever. And there were a few words that I thought might work here. So for example, this happy things would have actually been nice. A great day would have worked. This seems to be one from Daphne's diary from the font. I decided to go with the one that says with love because I'm giving a present with love. So I've just again inked around this with my espresso truffle ink and glued that on. I think that's very cute. So two envelopes done. So easy, so quick, so fun. Next I'm using an old, a vintage magazine that I received and I'm just going to use one of these pages. That has writing on one side and a very colorful image on the other. I'm just gonna make sure that I have a straight edge. Then I'm gonna fold it. It's gonna be a big envelope. Same technique as always. I think it's really fun that it's very colorful inside because of course we will see that peeking out at the top and the inside of the top flap as well. So, and I'm using this beautiful, beautiful, cute mushroom book. I'm going to show you the title in case you want to search for that somewhere. It is from that same antique bookstore. It's from 1968. So unfortunately, it still has a copyright, so I cannot scan these, but I can use the original pages. I could, of course, also make copies for myself and use it, but I'm just going to use the originals. And I'm looking for an image that I would like on this envelope. Aren't these gorgeous? I am just so in love with these images. What a lucky find. That bookstore visit was, oh my gosh, I was so happy. <laughs> and I'm going to use the red mushrooms, the poisonous ones. I don't know the English name. In German, it's called Fliegenpilz. <laughs> So again, I'm just tearing that out and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to fussy cut it or whether I just wanted to use the image as is. So first I decided to just tear around the image a little closer and then I decided to just leave that as is. I did want to ink the edges but not too dark so I used my tea dye distress ink for that and you can see it's a very very soft edge and I did the same thing with the envelope as well. I will have that um, distress 
oxide linked below as well and I'm using this grid washi I'm gonna actually use only washies as a background for this this washi I will link below as well it's from Uncle Ali <laughs> Aliexpress and I'm going to just start sticking different washies down now I don't have links for all the washies I'm using here the ones I will find I will link below so whatever is not in the links I don't remember where I got it from so yeah hopefully you'll find the one you need if you need any of these <laughs> I know we all need more washi but please do keep in mind that washi actually ex expires meaning um, it will the stickiness will change over time this is a Tim Holtz by the way um, the stickiness will change and they will tear once you have them too long meaning they will tear like um, lengthwise while you're trying to take a piece off it will completely tear and then you won't be able to really use it anymore so keep that in mind use your washies don't just hoard them I know it's hard I know <laughs> this one I think I can link below as well the red grid one I'm not done yet um, I did um, already glue the image down but now I also wanted to add some on top now this is one I don't have a link for and the next one I'll be using as well that came in a set that I got locally years and years ago and I've never seen this one online so these two are part of a set there were I think there's one more black one that goes with that and I took this red thing off again because um, it needed to have three red points and with that other washi it would have been four so that wasn't pleasing to the eye so this way it works so we have three done two more to go so the next one I'm actually making out of a coffee stained paper which has a hole in it so I wanted to so I couldn't really use it as a let's say as a journal page or something uh, so this was perfect to use it this way this time I'm going to make a bit of a longer like taller envelope but more narrow same method as always the flaps I'm again cutting straight on the top And this time I'm going to use my other corner rounder, which has a more large uh, corner. And I think I can link that one down below as well. And this time I'm inking up all the edges with my vintage photo. We'll also have that linked below if you can't find it locally. And that is what it looks like once everything is inked up and it's glued together. Loving this vintage look now we're going to decorate the front and do you remember we made these collage cards um, in a recent video which we then scanned and we can use in other projects so I will link that video down below as well if you missed that and so that's what I'm going to use for this so I hope you don't think I am cheating because I'm not making an original collage but we make these collages to use in other projects so that's the beauty of them very easy and quick to make another project with it so as you saw I just inked up the edges with my vintage photo and now I'm going to use again some washies because I wanted some more colorful accents so I'm gonna put that on the top as well There again you have your three accent points with the red and now I'm also adding my beloved beloved Tim Washi grid washi to add on there as well just for a bit more layering and interest. I love that look and I'm going to add a third one on top. So we have three red, red one, three red focal points and three of the grid ones. Very balanced. And I am going to use this grid washi to stamp on it because this one I already knew I was going to put into my journal 
and I started off using the clickable alphabet stamps that I bought from Michaels. I will link them below as well. And I'm using the espresso truffle ink and I'm stamping the word, word goals. And then I'm using my 12 roller stamp, a 12 digit roller stamp, which is also linked below to um, stamp the words check in. Now I couldn't stamp that with the clickable alphabet stamps that check in because the, I had two C's and there's only one C in that stamp set. But actually I was really happy because I think with the two different fonts it gives it more interest. So I inked around the edges and now I am just sticking those on there. And we will work with this a little later on. So that was envelope number four. Gosh, I just love doing these. They are so much fun. For the last one, I'm using this book that I got from Goodwill quite a long time ago. I will again show you the details in case you want to look for this. This is an English book, copyright 1988, um, from Switzerland. These were quite pricey. There was a whole series. I only got one of them. And... They have beautiful images inside, both black and white and color, although in this one I must say I like the black and white ones a lot more. And I will be using one of these large pages with black and white images for this next envelope, which is going to be our last envelope. So this is the page I'm going to be using. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just cutting off a little bit of the excess here because I don't want unnecessary bulk. And since it's a bit of a thicker paper, I'm using my ruler to burnish those creases down a little bit. Again, making straight edges for the top flap and then using my corner rounder, the large one. Okay, I've already glued everything down. And now for this one, I'm going to do some decoupaging, which I haven't done in a long time. So I recently found these adorable spring napkins. So I wanted to use this one on this envelope. So I'm taking away two of the plies of the napkin. And now I'm using a brush with water to... Um, make a line with the water so that it would tear exactly where I wanted it to tear. This is the best way to tear your napkins. Love, love, love this method. And it was a little bit too wide as you can see. So I decided to just cut everything out except that branch. And that branch is going to fold over onto the back side of the envelope. And I'm just going to use my glue stick to stick this down. I like to prevent having to use any liquids if I can because they're messy. <laughs> it's so much easier to deal with the glue stick. And I do like the texture of using the glue stick because then it kind of feels like you have fabric on your envelope. And so on the back, I'm just going to do the same thing and fold that branch over. Now, of course, I did want to add something else. This would not have been enough, although the image is absolutely adorable. So I have these images which are from a die cut book, which I believe I had gotten from the chain called Action, which we have here in Europe, which is from the Netherlands. And I'm just trying to show you some examples here. So you could put something like this, it's your birthday. That would have been very cute if you're gonna give this to someone for their birthday or this one. There's so much you can do to add something, a sentiment. This is also very cute, the congratulations. So there would have been so many options with this envelope. I'm trying to decide for one of them. 
This one would be cute if you cut that piece out or this one. Do all things with love. I like that one a lot. Then you can also use parts of images. So I'm actually going to cut these flowers off this teacup. And I think that is very adorable on the top there. And now I just wanted to add a sentiment. So I'm going to choose one of these two that I have on the right. So first I'm trying this one with the butterfly and the heart and I'm fussy cutting that image. Trying to see how that would fit but didn't, didn't completely like how that looked. I think what I thought was that the font was a bit too small. This one was better. I wasn't sure about the placement yet. So then I thought, well, what if I cover that part? And I did like that. So I was going to put those strawberries over that top piece. And I think that worked perfectly. Now all I'm doing is I'm cutting away these annoying what would you call them? They're the parts that are connected to the paper when you break them out of the paper. And I don't like those. So I just cut those away and now I'm just gluing those both, both of those elements on it. And I think it's really adorable how this turned out. It's so spring. So that is our fifth pocket. So now moving on into my junk journal, at the beginning of the year I made this envelope with visions for 2020. I will link that video below in case you're interested in seeing it and if you missed it. So I put down six goals, which I realize now is a lot and probably too much to concentrate on at the same time. <laughs> but I will go through, I will have like a little check in of where I am with my goals. I'm starting off with the one that says move. And what I've written on the back was, I so loved running at Schönbrunn Castle Park. I stopped because my knee hurt. I need to either go on regular long walks or go to the dreaded fitness center. So checking in on that goal, I'm just going to number these one through six and I'm going to put down where I am at this point after one month. So what I'm writing down is I feel like I'm on top of this one. In January, I walked over... 10,000 steps on 23 days out of 31 and I'm loving it. What I forgot to add was I'm also doing the intermittent fast and or that is actually something for point two with the food where I had put down going back to being a vegetarian. I don't know why this has taken me so long. I know better and convenience is not a good excuse. So I have gone back to being a vegetarian since January 1. I'm loving it. And I find this goal very, very easy to tackle. Number three was planning. What I had written on, uh, was, I would like to plan out my year and have a strategy for my brand and my videos and my upcoming online store. And I think I'm more or less doing well with this one because I'm currently in preparation or in, in the preparation phase of opening my business. I'm in a program with some consultants that will help me along the way so that's very exciting I'm very happy to have been accepted to this program so I'm, I'm actually well on the way for this one the next one was be the best version of you and I said keep working on self-development and growing as a person challenge yourself take risks get to know yourself better so for this one I wrote I'm challenging myself within my business and the current business program I'm in, but I have not taken any other concrete steps towards this goal. So this is definitely something I need to work 
more on during the year so I have 11 months more <laughs> to concentrate on this goal number five was less is more and what I wrote was keep decluttering all aspects of your life simplify have less stuff be less overwhelmed feel good about your all things you own and what I wrote now is I'm still decluttering I have slow down a little bit but I'm still going so I'm I feel like I'm on track with that one and lastly I have to go relax and I wrote in nine, in 2019 I was so focused on being productive and never wanted to waste any time I was on the verge of a burnout again and I need not to feel guilty about relaxing so what I wrote here was I think I'm doing okay with this goal I have been really enjoying my walks and reading a lot and I have not felt guilty so that one is going well as as well so I am now just folding my paper I'm gonna stick it into this envelope and I'm going to again look for another page to attach this to just with a paper clip so I can easily remove it and look at how I'm doing with my goals now I don't think I'll be doing this every month but it's good to check in once in a while I want to be accountable I want to keep track of my goals otherwise it's useless so maybe this inspires you to check in on your goals if you have any or to set some if you haven't or otherwise to just make some lovely pockets for yourself or for friends or for whatever. It's just so much fun. Thank you so much as always for watching. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Bye.